Hi, I'm Coach Sure. I want to thank you for coming to our home training facility here near uh, Buffalo, New York. Uh, I'd like to introduce the athletes that we'll be using for our video today. This is Tiffany Maskalinski. Tiffany is a 2004 high school national champion. Tiffany was the first high school girl to jump over 14 feet in outdoor track and field. She was the number one ranked high school girl vaulter in 2004. Also, I have Dan Tierney. Dan Tierney was the 2004 indoor high school national champion. Dan Tierney came to Shore Sports as a 10 foot, six inch pole vaulter. Less than a year later, jumped over 16 feet and won the 2004 indoor high school national championship. This is Mary Saxer uh, and Jen Stuzinski here to my right. Both came to Shore Sports and started pole vaulting for the very first time right here in this building. Mary, after a year and a half, went on to become the first girl to jump 14 feet in indoor track and field, set the United States junior record at 14 feet 2 inches, and broke the high school American record eight different times in one season. This is Jen Stuzinski. Jen was the uh, 2005 indoor national champion who shocked the uh, pole vaulting world a little bit when she, after just 10 months of training, won the uh, United States Indoor Track and Field Championship. She recently just won a 2006 U.S. Outdoor National Championship. She's the number one ranked United States vaulter. The first thing we'd like to do is go over our five fundamental takeoff drills. Our five fundamental takeoff drills are the foundation for all our vaulters, regardless of if they're jumping six feet or 16 feet. Uh, they start close to the box and then we slowly work our way back on the runway as we perfect our skills. Our fundamental takeoff skill number one is a snap plant. Our snap plant starts with a simple over under grip as Tiffany has here. Our grip is usually a little bit wider than what our hip width is. Uh, Tiffany's going to go ahead and start the drill. She's going to start with the pole straight up over her head and what we want to do is we want to lower the pole and the, and the word snap plant actually comes from uh, the noise at the very end of the pole will make when it hits the ground and Tiffany's going to simply move the pole straight up above her ear in a straight line, slightly forward moving on the pole and she's going to finish as tall as she can up on there her toes, uh, stretching all her limbs out. Go ahead Tiff. Very good again. Again, she's finishing as tall as she can. She's straight up over her ear. And if you can stop there just once, go ahead. And this right here line that we will draw from her hand through her ear, through her hip, and right down to the ball of her foot here is where we'll establish our takeoff point. Go ahead. Fundamental skill number one, snap plant. Fundamental takeoff skill number two is what we call a march raise. And the cadence that we're going to use here is just kind of like an army cadence, left, right, left, right. This cadence is going to be used for the next four drills that we do as we progress further from the box. Mary's going to demonstrate our march raise. Now this is a very simple drill and it's going to start right where the last drill took off. She's going to start with the pole straight up over her head, just like she just finished a snap plant, and she's simply going to march left, right, left, and jump straight up. Go ahead, Mary. Left, right, left, and jump. Very good. One more time. Left, right, left, and jump. Now, what we're emphasizing here is that we stay up right through takeoff. It's very important that you stay up right through takeoff, and we do not go to our back, and we do not establish on our heel falling to our back. So this, again, is right away establishing the habit of jumping but staying upright with our upper body, which is key through takeoff. One more time, Mary. Left, right, left, and jump. Go ahead. Left, right, left, and jump. Very good. Now she's jumping straight up. Again, fundamental takeoff skill number two, march raise. Fundamental takeoff skill number three, walk raise. Uh, what we want here is to re remember our cadence, left, right, left again. We're going to start with the pole straight up over our ear, just where we had finished the snap plan again. 
And what Tiffany's going to do, and we're going to emphasize here, again, that we stay upright through takeoff and that we don't reach out at the box as we run or approach the box. We want to snap our feet directly under our hips. So Tiffany's going to simply take a left, right, left, but instead of marching this time, she's going to walk towards the box. Already we've progressed back on the runway about three steps away from the box because, uh, again, we're trying to get back where we uh, apply a little more skill as we go. Now here goes Tiffany, left, right, left, and jump. Very good. One more time. Again, cadence, left, right, left, and jump. Now, Tiffany's doing a very good job of once she jumps up off the ground, she's not looking up, looking for any crossbars. Again, by habit, we're trying to establish that we stay upright uh, and drive into the pole while staying in that upright position. Fundamental skill number three, walk raise. Fundamental takeoff skill number four, uh, three-step plant. Now every coach uh, in America does a three-step plant to some degree. Uh, we again like, like the same type of drill. Uh, a couple things we want to emphasize and maybe a few things that we do a little bit different. As we work on a three-step plant, that's where transition zone comes in. Transition is when we bring the hands from low to high as we're accelerating down the runway. Transition zone is very important to master uh, with, with a very minimal loss of speed, so this is something that has to be worked on uh, quite diligently. Now Mary's going to demonstrate our three-step plant. What I'd like to emphasize is, is on our very first left step, which is our cadence, left, right, left, on our very first left step, we want to snap plant that pole straight up over our ear. So really what this is is a combination of the first three fundamental takeoff skills all brought into one skill. So on our first left of our cadence, we're going to snap plant the pole straight up over our ear. Then we're going to take a right and a left without reaching towards the box, snapping under our hips, and we want to stay as tall as we can, jump and stay upright off the ground. Again, emphasizing how important it is to stay upright through takeoff. Mary, go ahead. Left, right, left, and jump. Very good. One more time. Again, the importance here is on the first left, we snap plant the pole because we always want to emphasize having to pull high and early. And then when we jump, we certainly want to stay uh, upright as much as we can through takeoff, as long as we can through takeoff. Uh, again, fundamental skill, takeoff skill, number four, three-step plan. Fundamental takeoff skill, number five, push in. Now, this is a skill that I want to emphasize, a uh, very good skill. Um, some coaches have shied away from it a little bit. Uh, I want to emphasize that this is not tapping an athlete. Tapping an athlete is when they run down the, the uh, runway and we tap them on the back to give them support and then lose touch of the athlete. This is not that drill. This is simply a push in. We're going to support the athlete the entire time off the ground and then back to the ground as we practice our upright position at takeoff. Now the way that we get our steps for this particular drill is about three steps out and it's the exact takeoff drill is the three-step plant. The only difference now is we're going to push the athlete up and into the air. At first, to establish our steps though, we're going to have Tiffany simply do a three-step plant to make sure that her distance from the box is adequate. Go ahead. Left, right, left. Very good. Now we know that, that Tiffany's steps are very close in, in, a, in a good area where we can go ahead and get her to jump up off the ground. Now one other thing I want to emphasize is you probably don't want to pick uh, somebody half your size to push you in. You either want a, a coach or another athlete who's fairly strong who can support your body weight and push you in the air. Another safety tip I want to emphasize is that the athlete has to remain holding on to the pole uh, and certainly the coach or athlete has to remain holding on to the athlete in order for this to work. Now again we're going to establish a lot of things that we're looking for off takeoff. We're not going to lead out with our heel, we're going to snap our foot right under our hips, we're going to jump up, we're going to stay upright and we're going to get good leg separation as we jump out for height and distance into the pad. Go ahead. Left, right, left jump, press, stay upright, right back down. We'll try it again. Very good. Left, right, left jump, press, stay upright, right back down. Very good. Again, uh, and Tiffany does this very well, uh, we're jumping up off the ground, we're getting good leg separation, we're driving the pole forward, we're high and early with the plant. Uh, we're very tall at takeoff. These are all things that we want to emphasize and certainly we have to stay upright as we drive that pole through takeoff. Uh, again, Tiffany's one of the best at this. Uh, a lot of the kids that we have, we've had here have done a very good job. And, and again, the more we stay upright, the more we accelerate, the more we jump aggressively up and out into the pole, the longer and bigger pole we're going to bend.
We now want to cover our five fundamental up top drills. These are drills that help to establish our positioning once we've left the ground and we want to get completely upside down into the air and in position to make the crossbar. Our first fundamental up top skill is what we call a short stick to position one. Now I want to explain what position one is first. Position one is simply rotating the pole and the, and the athlete will actually rotate upside down to the point where one hand will come right to our groin, the other one to the center of our chest totally upside down, perpendicular to the ground. Now Mary's going to go ahead and demonstrate our short stick to position one. And we do this right with a half cut off stick just like this. Uh, again, this is a great drill that you can do at home. Doesn't even require a pole vaulting pole. Some people uh, will take a PVC piping, uh, even a golf club, baseball bat, anything that's about three, four feet long that you can practice your hand positioning with. But again, this is our first fundamental up top drill short stick to position one. Go ahead Mary, she's going to start just like she just did a snap plant and she's going to go ahead and rotate in, break in, tight to position one. Okay, try it again. I'm going to emphasize a few things and you can hold it there as long as you can Mary. Go ahead. She's going to rotate in. Her elbow breaks inside, one hand right to the groin, the other one right up to her, her chest neck area. Her right knee is bent up and her chin tucks to her chest. Here we go again, one more time. Short stick to position one. Very good. Now, we do this drill first for, for athletes to establish their hand positioning and their body positioning before we put them up in the air, even before a pop-up or, or a uh, three left approach pop-up. We do it here because if they're not establishing the hand positioning correctly here, they certainly aren't going to do it when they're up in the air and they have to take a little bit more of a risk. So certainly uh, a great way to start to get hand positioning and we do a lot of short stick drills like this, especially at a meet when you can't actually get on a runway during a competition, but you can reiterate the motor skills that we need to be successful. One more time, uh, short stick to position one, first fundamental up top skill. Good. Fundamental up top skill number two is a three left pop up. Uh, or a three left approach. Uh, this is commonly known as a pop-up, that's why we call it a pop-up. It's actually simply a three left approach and the athlete is going to go perpendicular to the ground completely upside down. We've already established with up top drill number one, short stick to position one, the hand positioning for the athlete along with the body positioning. This should act as a lead up exercise uh, to the actual pop-up. Now. And the way that we establish, especially for beginners, our handhold for a three left approach is simply to take our left hand, and again this is for a right handed vaulter, we take our left hand and we reach straight up over our head and grab the pole. This is about where most beginners will end up having their lower hand of, of their handhold. And then we'll simply go a little wider than our waist as we went over earlier and grip up top here. So again, the way to establish that hand grip is to lift straight up over our head arm length here with our left hand and that's where our left hand will rest on the pole, our right hand will be up higher, a little wider than our hips. Now once we do that we're going to establish our takeoff point. Our takeoff point, go ahead go up to the box, our takeoff point is going to be located straight up over our ear with the pole in the box with an imaginary line through our hand, our ear, our hips and the ball of our foot. This is our, our ideal takeoff point. Then from there, we're simply going to have the athlete turn around and take three aggressive left runs behind her. Okay, go ahead. One, two, three. Very good. We're simply going to mark the spot here, and this would be the beginning point for our three left pop up. You all set? Go ahead. Now what we want here is simply to take three lefts to get the pole high on two, then to jump on three and swing all the way to position one. Chest groin with the pole with the right and left hand. Go ahead. <clears throat> very good. Jen does a very good job of swinging through right hand, right to the groin, left hand, right to the center of the chest. We go completely upside down back to the pole. Not leading out away from the pole, but right tight to the pole so we can start that pull turn release eventually tight to the midline. We're going to demonstrate this one more time for you. And again, as we come in, we want to emphasize a high early takeoff point. So on our second left, we're going to snap plant that pole up forward and then jump off our third left. One, two, right tight position one. 
Okay. Now that we've established getting upside down and perpendicular to the ground to a good position one, uh, what we want to do is emphasize the pull turn release phase of the vault. This is when we actually leave the support of the pole and make the crossbar in free flight. Now what we want to do here, uh, this would be our fundamental up top skill number three, which is a short stick pull turn release. Uh, Mary again is going to start right in a position of uh, finishing a snap plant, pull straight up over her ear. And the first thing she's going to do is she's going to do that short stick position one, but then from there she's going to pull turn release through her midline and actually square up 180 degrees all the way around and, and release the pull. Go ahead and you release the pull on this one. She established position one, now pull turn release and let go of the pull. Very good. Now again, a couple things I want to emphasize is as we start to pull turn release, we want to keep the pole close to us, not to drift away from the pole. We want to go right directly through our midline. We want to turn 180 degrees so that our shoulders and stomach and hips are square to the crossbar as we clear it. Go ahead, Mary, we'll try it again to short stick to position one. Slight hesitation. Now we're going to pull turn release. Very good. Now, a couple more things that I'd like to just make a note of is as we release the pole, our left hand comes off the pole first and then our right hand releases the pole last. Once our left hand comes off the pole, we simply want to bring it to our neck so it's out of the way and it's not going to mess with the crossbar at all as we make our clearance. This again is for a right-handed vaulter. A left-handed vaulter would be reversed. Go ahead, Mary, one more time and if you can stop at the end so I can show your hand position, that'd be great. Go ahead. She's going to swing through tight to position one. Now we're going to pull, turn, release. She's going to stay there. Very good. And her left hand comes to her neck. And her right hand is the last one to release the pull. Again, fundamental up top skill number three, short stick, pull, turn, release. Fundamental up top skill uh, number four is going to be our lying stick pull turn release and this is actually done with the athlete lying on their back. Again this is to emphasize pull turn releasing through the midline and to squaring up our shoulders, our hips and our stomach to that crossbar to get that 180 degree turn down by habit. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have the athlete lay right down just like they're upside down uh, on the pole to the pole to their side here and what we'll do is we'll establish position one. And a good little mini drill that we'll do here is we're going to put the pole right to the side of Mary and we're simply going to tell Mary, okay, grab the pole and go to position one. This again allows the athlete to practice getting the pole to position one, chest groin with our hands and our chin tucked a little bit through our chest. Uh, by habit, again, without having to take that risk factor of being in the air. So again, it's just a, uh, a simple drill that progresses on to better things down the road. So again, Mary grabbed the pole there, went to position one, she's going to put it back down, she's going to do it again. Very good. Now, from here, what we're going to do is we're simply going to pull, turn, release the pole along the ground, squaring up to the ground. Go ahead. Pull, turn, release. Very good in releasing. Left hand to the neck, and we'll do it one more time. Here she is again. We'll start right from the ground. Mary's going to take the pole to position one, and she's going to pull, turn, release, and stay right there. Again, left hand to the neck, releases the wood to right hand long there, and we're squared up to the ground, which is going to represent our crossbar. Again, this is fundamental up top skill number four. This is a lying stick pull, turn, release. Fundamental up top skill number five is our rollback extension. Uh, this is for the phase of the ball uh, once we lose support of the pole that we still have to have the kinesthetic awareness to make the crossbar without knocking it down. Uh, this is a great drill for upper body de development, for strength development in our shoulders uh, both for our takeoff plant and also for the push off the pole off the top. A big part of, of the problem with the vault is, is uh, athletes have trouble clearing their head and their chest. This is a great drill uh, for that kinesthetic awareness of how to clear that head and chest uh, to make the crossbar. Now what I want to emphasize is, is uh, and this is simply a rollback extension, it's a fairly simple gymnastics move, and the first thing I want to mention is that you want both your hands up by your ears when we start for support of your neck as you push off. Uh, Tiffany will go ahead and demonstrate this now. Go ahead, Tiff. She's simply going to roll back, push up. Very good. Now, once she pushes off the ground, she's bringing her left hand up towards her neck again to get it out of the way of the crossbar and getting one last push with the right hand, uh, which is going to represent pushing off the pole. One more time, Tiff. Roll back up and through. Very good. Now, what we do a lot of times 
to enhance this uh, particular drill is to introduce a, a broken stick or a crossbar by another athlete to actually practice seeing your crossbar once you're up over it and still having to make it in midair. And Mary will go ahead and do that. Mary's going to establish the crossbar across there. Go ahead, Mary. And uh, up, over, and around. Very good. One more time. Tiffany's going to push right off and try to make that in free flight. Very good. Now again, uh, fundamental up top skill number five, back roll extension. Something can certainly help to clear the head and chest once you're off the pole. Now that we've established our five fundamental takeoff drills and our five fundamental up top drills, uh, we want to progress to, uh, to get to our training pole run, which is going to be a four left approach, uh, eight steps total. Uh, before we go into that, we certainly have to cover pole run and carry. The pole run and carry uh, is going to be, again, an over under grip for the right handed vaulter. Uh, the grip is going to be slightly wider than the hips, as we've said before. When we do lift the pole up, we're going to go ahead and uh, bring the pole up here. And what we want to do is our right hand, we want right around our, our right hip here. And our left hand is going to be about eight inches off of our, our right armpit right here uh, across at a, at a right angle with the, uh, the left arm. Now with this position, a few things I want to emphasize. When we run, we want to run tall and very rhythmic. And we want to always count our left steps. That gives us rhythm to our run, and it also tells us when to plant the pole. We always want to start to plant the second to last left. So if Tiffany is going to take six lefts, she's going to start her plant on her fifth left. That's why we always count our left steps to have a rhythmic run and to also tell us the timing of when to plant the pole. Now, when we start to run, we will start by stepping back on our right foot for balance and forward with our right and then counting our lefts. This is a quick progressive drill, lead up drill that we do with a lot of our kids simply to count left steps. I'll walk right next to them right here and Tiffany's going to step back with her right with me. Go ahead back and then we're going to count our lefts. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Very good. And that's how we start to establish counting our left steps. A few other things I want to emphasize as we run is we want to be tall and upright because we want to be as tall as we can through takeoff. So we want to run with a tall posture. We want a little bit of an arch in our lower back. So we run tall and proud. And as we run, we want to drive our heels right towards our buttocks for a good positive knee lift out in front. Again, the pole run is something that you can't practice enough. Many, many kids do a lot of running, but they don't do pole runs. Pole runs are very important for us. Again, Tiffany will demonstrate uh, th this full run. Usually our girls take about six lefts in competition. Our guys are usually take about eight lefts in competition as far as the distance of the run. What we'd like to do now is to establish our four left training pole run and a lead up drill to our four left training pole run, which is really where we spend a majority of our time training uh, because you can actually go through the entire vault. Uh, first, we're going to establish a pure drive phase uh, followed by a position one phase off of that, followed by pull turn release and actually a bar clearance. But the first lead up drill to all that is certainly taking care of the pole run and carry. So after of the pole run and carry, we're now going to practice lowering the pole planning high on our third left and jumping on our fourth left, getting ready for a towel plant or a box plant uh, as we progress down. The first thing we have to do though is establish Dan's takeoff mark for a four left approach, starting stepping back on his right and then going forward counting his lefts. A four left approach which he'll demonstrate now. One, two, three, four. Very good. And what we'll do is we're going to mark the spot right where Dan left there with, with the uh, blue X. And we're going to have him come on up to establish where the towel will go. Go ahead. And he'll put the pole straight up over his ear with his toe right on his four left mark. And what we'll do is we'll mark another X right here at the pole tip. And this will represent the very back of the pole vaulting planting box. What we like to do is just use a normal towel you know, a two foot by three foot towel is adequate or any size towel really will do. And we're simply going to lay this towel down with the back of the towel representing the back of the box. 
and our next step is to simply do the same four left approach and be able to steer the end of that pole consistently into hitting that tile at takeoff. Once we've done that, then we know we're ready to go ahead and progress and have the athlete leave the ground and go ahead and try to pole vault on a pier drive. Dan, you want to demonstrate this for us again? All the good things that we're thinking about here with the run is to run tall, to run upright, start with that right foot back, counting our left steps, one, two, three, four. Very good. Very good. Again, that is a tile plant. Four left approach. Once we establish these markings, we can simply go right up to the box, get our takeoff point, and measure accordingly back the same distance. And we can go ahead and start with our peer, peer drive phase uh, where we work on our takeoff and our takeoff positioning. Off of our tire plants and our pole run and carry, the next thing that we want to establish is our four left training pole uh, drills. And, and our first phase is what we call our pier drive phase. In other words, we just want to come down high on three, jump on four, and jump and stay upright throughout the entire jump. In no way are we emphasizing anything in the air here. All we're trying to establish is takeoff, good takeoff positioning, an aggressive jump out, good leg separation, a good snapping down under our hips as we run and also certainly staying upright the entire time. This is probably the single most drill here at Sure Sports that we do more than any other drill. Short runs, working on takeoff dynamics. This to us ultimately is going to determine how high you jump, your efficiency of takeoff. Both Jennifer Stuzinski and Dan Tierney here will be doing a couple examples of what we call our, our four left takeoff pier drives. These are pier drives. Go ahead. Two, three, four, jump up, press, very good, staying upright the whole time, landing into the pad. Very good, Dan. Here goes Jen, and again, just a four left approach. We'll be high on three, jump on four, and press that pole right out, jump up, stay upright, good leg separation, very good, excellent. Very good. Again, the key is to accelerate through the takeoff, not to be slowing down at all, not to be intimidated by the box, certainly not to reach out at the box with our heels, that's a common mistake. Uh, and also to work on that transition zone, bringing our hands from low to high as we come through takeoff. Here goes Dan again, he'll be high on three, jumping on four, three, four, jump up and out, aggressively into the pole, very good. It's amazing on just this four left approach. And again, we, we use this approach more than any other uh, length of approach in our training. Up, out, forward, very good. Uh, pure drive. Again, what we're looking for here is for the athlete to stay upright and to uh, accelerate through the box, get good leg separation, to flex the pole and keep the pole moving forward as long as we can and in no way catering to our back or uh, lifting our head up, but everything simply goes forward, staying upright, driving into the pad for the maximum amount of penetration. Again, that's called a pier drive. Okay, after establishing our pier drive phase there, and, and, and again, I want to emphasize, uh, you can't work on that one enough, uh, and we feel that we are penetrating the poles well and, and, and well into the pad, we want to go to our next training pole phase, which is our pier drive to position one. Now, we spend a lot of time in detail uh, doing drills for position one. The key here is to, to remember not to fall to our back or throw our head back or anything like that. That tends to be a, uh, a habit that a lot of high school and college kids have. What we want to do is jump, establish our pier drive, and stay upright for a split second, then rotate all the way to the pole perpendicular 180 degrees uh, to position one, finishing with our hands to our chest and our groin. Now, any time that you combine two phases into one, there's, there's a lot of adjustment time there. So, so this can be a difficult and, and a very time consuming thing for a, an athlete to master. But with time, and if you keep establishing a good positive drive, a good pure drive uh, to your position one, it will come with time, even though it can be difficult. So here we're gonna have Jennifer and Dan both demonstrate uh, a good pure drive, but then swing right to our second phase, position one off of that. Certainly without a crossbar here. Jump, press upright, then to position one, chest and groin. Very good. Excellent position. And again, now Dan did not get impatient falling to his back or throwing his head back, anything like that. He jumped, he stayed upright, he drove in upright, then he went into his swing to position one. 
Many people call this the swing phase. We call this the position one phase. And here, just a four left approach. High on three, jump on four, swing tight, very good. And again, uh, she jumped, she was patient, she stayed upright, she drove forward, got the pole moving, then she swung all the way simply to position one. Nothing else but back to the pole with patience to position one. Good smooth run, accelerating through to takeoff, good leg separation off takeoff. There we go forward, tight to the pole, very good, very good. Jump right out in that pole, aggressive. Height and distance out into it, right to it. Very good, right to the midline, very good. Off of a bending pole is a little bit, a little bit different than just doing it off a pop-up. Uh, the first progression uh, for athletes would be to simply be on a stiff pole, taking three lefts, popping up, getting to position one uh, to that chest groin position. Uh, the next challenge is to have it live with a faster run uh, with the pole flexing and bending and moving uh, faster and at that point we have to establish that position one. A little bit more difficult off the pole flexing but again uh, in combining two phases there's always a little bit more time that you're going to have to work on it. After establishing our pier drive phase and our pier drive to position one our last and third phase of our training pole run which we practice is the pull turn release. Now again earlier today we went over the uh, the fundamental up top drill of a short stick pull turn release that Mary uh, demonstrated. We're going to have her do that again because now once we do it with the pole bending there's no difference in, in, in the positioning with the hands or the body. The only exception certainly is is that we're going to be upside down in the actual air coming off a bent pole. Much more difficult. However, the hand positioning and the uh, body positioning is very similar to the lead up drill. Go ahead Mary. She's going to start with the uh, pole straight up over here. She's going to go to position one first tight position one chest and groin then pull turn release just like that very good now this is the exact motion that we're going to do except now when Dan does it in our third phase of our training pull run he's actually going to pull turn release right up over the crossbar or a bungee if you prefer that in practice We want to thank you again for coming out to Buffalo, New York and sharing some pole vaulting time with us and, and I hope some of the drills that we've gone over and some of the things we've showed you here today can help with your vaulting uh, as you progress down the journey of pole vaulting. Um, all four of the athletes with me have all won national titles. I think the, the common thing that you see uh, is that they've all worked very hard, all worked on drills and perf the perfection of drills. Uh, they're all different heights, different shapes, sizes, but uh, all had that commonality of uh, working on drills very diligently. We want to thank you again, and bye-bye. Uh,